So firstly, what is a CV for? Well, the purpose of your CV is to get you an interview. The employer wants to know, if I employ this person, what impact are they going to have on my business? You need to show them enough about you so that they want to meet you. So how do you do that? So what to include? Your name and contact details. They need to be able to get hold of you. A simple professional email address like first name, dot surname, not Chris Monster 500, and a phone number is fine. If you're at the start of your career, then adding a profile section here at the top of your CV is a good idea, because this is where you can highlight the skills that you've got that are most relevant to the job. Just like I explained in my last video, you go through the job description, pick out the most important skills and experience, and then show them that you've got them. This makes the employer keep reading. The next section could either be your education or your experience. If you've got a qualification, like in this example here, that is directly relevant to the job that you've applied for, so if you've done Creative Media BTEC and you're now applying for an IT or digital marketing apprenticeship, for instance, then putting education first makes sense. Put your most recent qualifications first with the grade if you've already got it. You can put a predicted grade if you're not sure and then add your older qualifications. If the experience that you've got is more relevant to the job than the, your qualifications, then you'll put this section first. The mistake that people often make with this part of their CV is that they make it into a list of tasks. That only tells an employer what you were supposed to do, not how well you did it. Write a line or two about what your main responsibilities were and then add two or three bullet points highlighting your main achievements in that role. Use active verbs like designed, created or led rather than I was asked to or I did. You can include work experience, virtual and in person, school projects like a charity fundraiser for instance, positions of responsibility like a peer mentor or a prefect, BTEC projects where you might have worked or led a team, volunteering, so with scouts or guides or D of E, as well as any paid work that you might. You then might want to add a skill section, particularly if the job description asks for something really specific. Things that you could include here are languages that you speak, Microsoft Office skills, Zoom, YouTube Studio, programming languages like Python, and if you have a driving license, you can put that here too. At the end of your CV, if you have space and if you want to, you can add an interest section, which is where you add two or three lines about your hobbies and interests to show a little bit more about who you are as a person outside of work. Don't make things up to make yourself sound interesting. You might be asked about something in this section at the beginning of your interview as a way to make you feel at ease. And if you're caught out, then they might question what else you've not been honest about on your CV. Finally, some things to leave off your CV. Some older CV templates might suggest that you put your date of birth, marital status or gender. You don't need to. You also don't need a photo of yourself. This is common in some countries, but in the UK it isn't usual. So keep it formal and functional with no pictures, no funky fonts, and it's best to stick to black text in case it's printed out. So to sum up, your CV is a formal document about you and your achievements, but isn't just a list of everything you've ever done with no detail. Put yourself in the shoes of the employer. Use your CV to show them what you've achieved that makes you a good fit for their job vacancy. Good luck.